Okay, so we are going to um, talk about exponential functions. Okay, let me put on the pen here. Um, exponential functions are um, pretty much functions that as you're growing them, they, they look like taking part of a parabola in that they start to grow really fast. But unlike a parabola, parabolas like, you know, they, they go like this and then they you know, and then they kind of go in the other direction. An exponential, exponential function um, doesn't do that. An exponential function kind of flattens out one way or the other, and it can be kind of turned around, and they can do all kinds of transformations and weird things to it. But basically, you're going to get something that sort of goes like this, right? And then it's going to sort of flatten out, and it's going to approach a line that it's never going to touch, and we'll talk about what that is in a second. So that's, um, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about here. Um, and uh, we'll talk about exponential decay and all of this. And um, this, is, um, this is something that is used quite a bit in science and also in banking, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting stuff, okay? So the vo vocab um, that, the, that the resources can throw at you here is uh, exponential function, exponential growth, asymptote, right? And that's a line that the graph approaches but never quite touches, right? And so it's, you can kind of consider it a boundary, right? And for, uh, for most of what we're going to be doing, it's going to be showing up as um, the lower bound of the range. Um, and then we'll talk about growth factor, exponential decay, and decay factor, okay? So here is where we are starting. This is our parent function of exponential growth functions. And when they show these, they're going to have a number in for b, right? And they'll say b is greater than 1. So you don't, you don't do 1 to the anything power because that's just kind of silly. Because if you do 1 to the 1 power, that's 1. If you do 1 to the second power, it's 1. 1 to the anything power, the you know 432nd power, is 1, right? So... That's why they're always saying it's usually something bigger than 1 when they're doing that. Um, and you can kind of see your graph here. It's, it's, uh, even though it looks like it, this line, though, never touches 0, right? It never touches 0. So we call the x-axis, in this case, is our asymptote, right? That's a line that the graph approaches, but it never touches. And, uh, and that's kind of cool. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting if you think about it. And, uh, and, if, and if you don't uh, believe me, um, when we start plugging in some numbers, you'll, you'll start to see why that is. And then, generally speaking, domain is going to always be all real numbers, so from negative to positive infinity. And then your range is usually going to be from your asymptote, but not including the asymptote, but, but right up to it. And then up to positive infinity in most of these, unless it's, um, unless it's transformed in some sort of way. Um, there is no symmetry of any kind, point or line symmetry in this. And there's no extrema because it's basically a, it's basically a, a straight line that eventually opens up into a curve, right? And so, um, and it curves really fast and then it looks almost straight because it just goes up so fast and grows, right? So kind of looks like if you took something and, you know, sort of bent it and like that, right? Over time, maybe maybe a little better than that, but you get the idea, right? Okay, moving on. Um, so for this first example, um, it says graph y equals two to the x power, right? State the domain and range. And so we gotta um, we gotta remember how these work, right? So let's uh, let's take a number that that's uh, so if you do y to equals 2 to the, now we're going to plug this number in, this negative 2 power, right? So think about what that means. Well, when you have a negative exponent, it means that you're taking your thing with the base and you're putting it in the denominator, right? And then it's 2 squared. And it's 1 over 2 squared. And 2 squared is 4. So you have 1 over 4. Now, let's use a much smaller number. Let's say we have y equals 2 to the negative 6 power. Right, so that would be one over two to the sixth, and two to the sixth power, I believe, is sixty-four. So you would have one sixty-fourth, and as these numbers go closer and closer to negative infinity, right? So even if you did two to the, you know, the negative eighth power, right, it would be one over, 
you know, and you multiply 64 by 2 another two times and you get 256, right? So you can see this gets really, really small really quickly, but it's never theoretically going to hit zero. And that's why you, you have that asymptote on this, right? Okay, so negative 2, you put it in, you get 1 fourth. Now when you start getting bigger, and I'll write over here, you get y to the 2 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 2. That's how you get 1 half. Anything to the 0 power is always 1, right? Doesn't, doesn't matter what number it is, it's 1. Um, and then when you have y equals 2 to the first power, it's just 2. y equals 2 to the second power, that's going to be 4. If you extend this and keep going... It's going to just keep going up in your powers of 2, which I highly recommend learning because they'll come in handy. Um, and it grows really fast, right? And so when you sketch the graph, right, you're going to get this smooth curve that's going to kind of look like this. Here is your asymptote right here, okay? So it's never, it's never going to, you know, touch this line, right? And uh, the domain... Again, is um, as they as they showed, you know, is from, you know, negative infinity to positive infinity, and then for your um, for your range, right? Your range is going to um, basically be y is, you know, anything greater than zero. You know, so it's uh, and it, they write it as all po positive real numbers, right? So it will never touch zero. So it, we can't have that in there. That won't work, right? We got that's a no-no. So you're not going to have that. But it gets really close to it, as we as we showed before. All right. So that's kind of how these work. Let's take a look now at um, at another example here. It says which is the graph y equals three to the x power. And it looks like they went ahead and answered this for us already. <laughs> and it is, it is C, right? It's uh, y equals 3 to the x. It's going to look a lot like the one we just had, right? Except it's going to grow faster, right? And so the way you can tell is if you look at this and you go to the 1, right? 3 to the 1 power would be 3. And sure enough, there it is, crossing at 3, okay? I'm going to... Um, let me see here. Let's um, slide show. Let's say from current slide. Okay. Okay. So moving along here. All right. And we figured we figured that out. Okay. C. Right. All right. So let's, let's go on to the next thing. So you can trans you can transform these things in another uh, number of different ways. Right. They have this a b to the x. So your parent function. Right. Is this oops let's let's go back here so the parent function is let me use this instead uh, there we go your parent function is going to be you know f of x equals b to the wow i don't know what's going on here um it's freaking out it's going to be f of x equals b to the x, right? That's your parent function. And so what this a is going to do is this a is going to make this thing grow faster, okay? Um, what this will do is this will basically take um, the, the number you put in and it will kind of delay it and sort of slide it over before it hits 1. And then this k, right, is going gonna, is gonna to basically move this thing up and down, right? That way the horizontal translation is what the h does, right? That slides it over okay and then um the orientation and shape like we said it's it's kind of like making it open quicker than it would normally on its own okay so let's go here to the next thing all right so it says graph the function y equals three to the x minus two state the domain and range again you are going to um you're going to plot a table Right, you're gonna put a table together, and they, they did, uh, you know, a few more values just to kind of give you an idea. And so, uh, three to the negative third is gonna be, you know, one over twenty-seven because it's one over three to the third. So it's one over twenty-seven 
So it's 127 minus 2, which is basically, you know, negative 53 27 right? And then, um, you know, the rest of these, you know, you're going you're gonna to get some, you know, kind of weird values. But you can see here that basically you, for, your, for your zero, you're still, right? It's taking it and it's shifting it. Right? When you put zero in, it, it takes it and it moves it down. So instead of it crossing the x-axis at 1, it's crossing the x, or the y-axis at 1, it's crossing the y-axis at negative 1 because it was shifted down two units. Okay? So, um, and it's just, it's basically going to operate and open up exactly the same way this is, except that the whole thing, instead of being something that looks like this, you know, you just move the whole thing down two units and it's going to, you know, look like that instead, okay? So, nothing, nothing too insanely complicated. All right, let's see. I, they're going to probably graph it for us right here, right? Yep, and there it is. That's where it's crossing. There's a domain. Um, and, then, um, and then your range... All right, is your asymptote this time because it got shifted down is, you know, going to negative 2. All right, so it's going to be y equals negative 2 is going to be your asymptote. All right, so let's move on to the next thing here. Now, for this one, um, 2 to the x minus 1. So pretty much this is going to take everything and it's going to shift it to the right one unit because you're, you're, you're taking one away. So if you think about it, just state, state where you think, if you normally, if you have y equals 2 to the x, right, and you put 0 in, right, and you get 2 to the 0 equals 1, well, if you're subtracting 1 from it, excuse me, if you're subtracting 1 from it and you put 0 in, it's 2 to the 0 minus 1, which means now that you have 1 half. Right? And so in order to get to this 1, you would have to use 1. So it just it takes it longer to, to get to that point. Right? It's not shifting it one way or the other. And then, um, and then it's, like I said, it's basically all the same points. It's just being moved. And so you can see this right here, how it's... Um, how it is being shifted. So you see how you got one right here. This is normally where it would go through the y-axis. It's right there, but it's been shifted over ones. Other than that, it's the same graph, right? The asymptote is still the x-axis, and it's still opening up like how it did in the past. All right, so on this one, we have y equals 2 to the x minus 4. Well, we know that when we subtract the number from here, it makes a vertical translation, right? So if it's making a vertical translation of minus 4, that means it's dropping it down 4 units, right? And so if you look at the one where your asymptote is going to be negative 4, that's this one right here, C. Okay, and so let's see, see what we get here. See what they, th see what they think. And sure enough, there it is. Right? Other than that, it's, it's that same parent function, that y equals to the x that we've been talking about. All right? And now, now when you throw both of these things in, right? First of all, it's y equals 4 to the x. So it's, you know, it's, it's going to open, you know, really quickly. Right? Um, it's, now it's shifted up 3 units. So its asymptote is going to be, is going to be 3. And then the x minus 2 means that it's getting shifted two units to, uh, to the right. So you're going to look for where is it going one higher than it was before, where its asymptote is, right? But two units later, and it, sure enough, it's right here. So if this were the original thing, right, it would be over here where it goes through. It got shifted over two units, so it should be letter A. And there you go. All right, I think this would be a good place to stop the video, and then we'll pick up the next video um, 
where we're leaving off, okay? We'll discard our annotations and we will stop the video.